My name's Sasha Pete, and I'm joined none other than the legendary team of the century, Melbourne, Croatia, and Socceroo forward, Tommy Cumming. Welcome, Tommy. Thanks, Sasha. Thanks for having me. So, Tommy, tell us, how did you fall in love with our great game? I think it's like most young boys. I think I was born with a soccer ball at my feet. And, and as I say, just 24-7 out in the streets, hitting a ball against a goalpost or a street light. Every bit of light, just, that's all we did was play. Oh, that's fantastic. And you grew <laughs> up uh, on, uh, you were born in uh, Scotland, uh, just the outside of Glasgow. So tell us what it was like uh, growing up. Uh, what town were you did you grow up in the, outs in the outskirts of Glasgow? Well, I was born in Barhead, born and bred, and um, just lower class, middle class, never had a lot of stuff. Mum and dad, not got a lot of money, so a pair of boots and a ball <laughs> don't cost too much. Fantastic. And I started playing for the school, and I took it from there. Okay, so you've, you, the, your first interest of playing, obviously, other than the streets is your school side. Yeah, I played the school football all through my primary years and secondary years. And did you always gravitate to the front of the pitch? Yeah, because I was a greedy little bugger. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. And um, when did you first uh, come to play what you would call against men, your first your junior side or senior side, what, what was that team? Well, I actually never played. When I first started playing with the older men and against the older men, was actually every Sunday up in our local soccer park. It was like about 25 soccer pitches. I used to go up every Sunday and play with the older men, and it really toughened me up and made me think about it. So you either had to be quick, tough, or fast. And luckily enough, I had all three. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. And um, how old were you when you made your first sort of senior appearance? Well, I was probably 17. As I say, I played for um, Juvenile Soccer, for Paisley YM Soccer Club. Mm -hmm. And from there, I went semi-pro into Johnston Borough, who played in the junior leagues. And tell us, who are the types yeah, of people 17 that... Years old. 17 years old. And who are the types of people that would play in that type of league? As I said, there are a lot of farmed out S forms from senior clubs and a lot of ex-professionals from senior clubs dropping down a league or two. Mm. And a lot of young boys like myself coming through, looking mm. to make a go of it. And what do you, what do you remember from your time there in, uh, in Glasgow? Well, I, I remember my first night I went to Johnston Borough from the juvenile club and I trained. And then after that, we went into, had a shower, came in, the committee called me into the room and they says to me that they would like to sign me. And I says, okay, not bad. And I says, they says, would you like to sign amateur or professional? And I said, well, what's the difference? And he says, I would pay you if you're professional. I says, that would do me. <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember how much it was? I think it was about five pound a game. Brilliant. A bit of spending money after the game, right? But what, what, would, a beer, what would a beer cost you uh, uh, in, uh, at that time? Oh, not a lot. Not a lot. So five pound was quite a, quite a few bob then, I suppose. Fantastic. And... Um, you, you, you're playing in, in Scotland, and uh, how is it that you end up in Australia? Well, as I said, Johnston Borough, we, we used to play and train and go for a beer after, after training like most players do. And um, my friend from Glasgow, he says that they were looking for players in Australia, in Victoria. When he, I says, how do you know? And he says, oh, there's a, an ad in the paper. So he actually brought it the next training night and gave it to me. And as I said to you before, it was for JUST. And it was uh, Mr. Les Shorrock who was doing a bit of scouting for them. So anyway, I wrote away. And then the next day, you know, I've got two tickets, a uh, return ticket for me and my wife because I just got married then. At 17, I was 18, I was young. <laughs> I know that. 
And um, then I kind of took a back seat. I wasn't going to come because I was a bit weary. And then the guys who were getting around the soccer club said, well, you've got nothing to lose because you've got a return ticket. You can jump on a plane and come back straight away. So that's how that became about and how I landed here in Australia. And the club or somebody had funded your, your way to Australia for you to have it, this, this kick. So you end up uh, coming across to Melbourne and then what happens? Well, I come to Melbourne with a suitcase, a wife and 90 pounds. So I never had a lot to come with. And I remember landing at Tullamarine. I've, I remember walking through the doors at immigration. I've got a, a length full leather coat on and it's 36 degrees in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it must have looked funny. And, um, but you uh, never ended up signing for Footscray JUST. So what happened there? Uh, I think Les Shorrock had a fallen out with Tony Kovac, I think his name was, who was the president. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some reason, I never knew all this, but by the time I got here, he had moved to Sunshine. So he just, they, they took me. So uh, two return uh, tickets from uh, Glasgow to Melbourne. Happy days. So you jump on a plane uh, off to Australia. Uh, you're going to supposedly play for one team, but you end up, instead of being at Footscray, you end up being at Sunshine City. So that would have been a welcome uh, home away from home. Uh, a lot of the lads there were from the, the UK at Sunshine City. What, was, what do you remember about your time at Sunshine City? A very, very British club and a great club to come to. As I say, homesickness is never a factor. Mm. You could go anywhere and you, you were welcome. Soccer-wise, we were a good side. We weren't a great side, but we were very hard to beat. Yep, yep. So I, um, I remember from that Sunshine City side, a guy who would end up going and, and helping my club, Western Suburbs, Ray Pocock. Um, but who are some of the other lads that you played with in your time at Sunshine City? I uh, don't know if you know them, but it was Frankie Muscles, Ian MacArthur, Jimmy McRoberts, Kaz Petrowski, Billy Johnson, uh, Steve Kokoska, who was yes. mentioned at the time to be the next uh, Socceroo centre-half, mm. which when Jimmy Shoulder was in charge of the Australian team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that never came to fruition for me. So great, great names. And um, so uh, you stayed at uh, Sunshine City for a couple of seasons. And uh, weren't you uh, supposed to be on your way home back to uh, Scotland? So what happened there? Well, after having such a good first year, there was a few clubs chasing me up. Mm. So... Um, Heidelberg wanted to sign me. Mm. And I says, well, Sunshine want too much money. So I'm on, I says I'm on a free transfer. So what I'll do is I'll go home and then I'll come back to you so if you pay for the ticket. So that was arranged. But in the meantime, Sunshine got, heard whispers about me coming back. And I think because I was still on their visa, they, they, they says to me they cancelled it. So I, I, apply, I arrive at immigration with my wife and my, again, and I get stopped going through the border because Sunshine, actually Bobby Pocock, Ray's brother was there. He was a committee man. Wow. And they said I, had, they says I hadn't a visa, which thinking back now, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of lies. I think they just tried to bluff their way in, which it worked. <laughs> How's this? You're... Heidelberg want you. you, you try to do this shimmy up and back and uh, they're knocking on your door as you're coming back in to, through the immigration waiting for you saying, no, listen, you're going to play another season for us. That's correct. They'll sign that's, the contract till I get to go to send me home. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. So uh, you, uh, you, uh, but you did well at Sunshine City. Um, you know, you scored plenty of goals there. Um, I think uh, from memory, you, did you get one of the, the best and fairest uh, there one of the years that you were there at Sunshine City? Yeah, it was top goal scorer and best and fairest. Oh, I, I, was, I was just more ambitious than what the club were. Mm. That was all. Yep, yep. So um, good news for uh, some other teams. So uh, and straight from Sunshine City, um, 
you get Melbourne, Croatia come knocking. So uh, you head across to them. How did that eventuate? Well, uh, well, it was playing for Sunshine. I don't know if you remember the Ample Cup nights. Yes. It was a, the summer competition played late in the summer evenings, which was a very good, it was a great competition. But I went there one night to watch a, a double header. And all I could hear was crack, chack, crack, chack, crack. There was about 15,000 supporters there from this club. And I just looked up at them and I just went, that's for me. I fell in love with the club. There and then. Yes, by hearing them chant. That's brilliant. And from then on, oh, yeah. I just went, what's this? This is what soccer was all about. And they had it. Hellas had it. Heidelberg had it. It was just a big fan club. Where the sunshine, they struggled to get a couple of hundred supporters. Yeah. So, I don't know. As I say, I just my ego just went, I want to play for that club and give yes. those fans what I want, what they've given me. Yes, brilliant. And um, obviously you be, go on to become a fantastic servant of Melbourne, Croatia and your time there um, playing with some other brilliant players um, nominated and accepted in the team of the century. So fantastic uh Fantastic honours um, there for you, uh, Tommy. Who Talk to me about the time. Who are you playing with? At that time, it was... Uh, well, Kokosko had went the same time as me. So I had, me, and, me and Steve used to go to training together. But we, Johnny Garner, Duncan Mackay was a coach at first. Uh -huh. And we sacked him pre-season. Uh -huh. So Duncan was actually wanting me there. And then Johnny Gardner came. Okay. And next was Johnny signed me as well. And he was a player coach. But so Gardner and Kokoska at the back. Me, Kenny Murphy, Cal Gilda, Branko Kalina, Billy Wojtek, the legend. Yes. And then we, then we built a new sort of team because Croatia just came up the leagues as well. Yep. And we just started getting fantastic players from everywhere. Okay, so a real uh, Scottish mix there in there in the in the in, in there amongst that Croatian. Uh, uh, we had side. everything, Sash. Sorry, yeah, we had everything. We had, we had the skill. Yep. We had the hard men. We had the goal scorers. Yep. We just had a quality side, a quality squad. Yep. Like Kalina, Wojtek. Yes. You know, could be anybody on a sixpence. Yes. Uh, we had. Ante Balava, who was a fullback, Oof, he would run through steel for you. Yes. Would you, Alan Kerr in midfield just mopped everybody up. Mm. But we had a talent and we just we destroyed teams. Yes. We talk about soccer, we talk about systems. If you've got the players, it doesn't matter what system you want to play. Yeah, you control the game. You literally you control the game and That's you do right. whatever you want. Yeah. And, uh, and you, you, you still lose games. Yeah. But you, you control most of the games. Yes. And you I'll, got, I'll tell you a story when I was at Croatia. I'll tell you a story about coaching. Yeah. Yep. Johnny Gardner was coaching us one night at training. And we lined up. There was me, David Brogan with the two forwards. And just before the session started, Johnny says, when we take the kickoff, I want David and me to drop back to central midfielders. And I asked the question, as I always did, Why? He says, well, because you're scoring goals left, right, and centre, they'll pick these up that tight. It'll throw them off the game. And I said, oh, fair enough. I said, but why don't we just go out on the park, play the way we normally play, then if it's not working, me and David will drop back into midfield and see what happens then. We went down on the Sunday, started as normal. We were 5 nothing up at half-time, Sash. Yeah, the game's over. Game is over, so over coaching, you know what I mean? So. That's right, yeah. So you can be the best coach of the work, if you, uh, coach in the world. If you haven't got the cattle in the park, it doesn't matter. And the same, the same goes. Right. You could probably be the worst coach of the world, right? But if you've got a quality side, they're going to do the job for you. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, and hats off to Johnny Gardner, uh, obviously, for, for coaching uh, Melbourne Croatia. He also coached the Victorian side. Uh, you were selected many times for the, the Victorians um, as well. Um, so, do you remember much of representing your state? 
I remember every game I played. Okay. I and played with some superstars of the game. Yes. Gary Cole, Jamie Payton, John Eisenhorn. Mm. I just can go on and on and on. Does I any remember game... the big best game was probably against the Cosmos yes. at Victoria and they beat us 2 1. I loved that game. Yes, uh, so New York Cosmos, who can forget their star studded uh, team? They were really the, the first sort of, um, call it marquee team, a manufactured club, but a marquee team at that time. Uh, do you remember some the of the Harlem names? Globe, were... The Harlem Globetrotters of the soccer? <laughs> yes, Harlem Globetrotters of soccer. Good, 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 uh, good analogy. And who are some of the players in that New York Cosmos side? Dennis Stewart, Chinaglia, uh, the Kaiser. Just that, yes. Quality, Escadarian, quality all round. Yes. And the thing I got about them on the part they were good, they still wanted to win. Yes. They were off the part they were all gentlemen. Uh huh. Uh, Beckenbauer was one of the best. I've got photographs of me and him together, but he was just a gentleman. Yes. It's time for everybody. And that you can't call it chat. I remember Beckenbauer in, uh, when he was uh, watching back that video. He'd be able to hit the ball with the outside of his foot, right, and just curl it. You know, 20, 30 yards, pinpoint. Um, and he's doing it on the outside of his foot, curling the ball, um, lofting it uh, as it hits a player. And just quality. Um, there's plays today that couldn't do that. And he just does it so effortlessly. Truly one of the greatest players to ever play. And, um, and you're hovering around uh, the pitch, like you said, uh, around him. It would have been a, a good feeling because he obviously was the, one of the big stars um, of that 74 uh, West Germany side. So uh, congratulations for those moments. Uh, what, what, are, what are some of the other games that you remember for Melbourne, Croatia? because you guys won a lot of titles. Um, was there, is there one challenge or one episode that stands out in your mind? I, th I think the one that stands out in my mind was, uh, I think it was a dock at the cup final mm -hmm. when we played Frankston City, mm -hmm. who were a very good side and had quality players all around as well. And um, just a couple of minutes ago, they were leading 2-1. And they've actually brung onto the running track at Olympic Park, they've rung out the dock at the cup to present it to the winners. And they've got the yellow and blue ribbons on streamers tied to the cup. Ribbons on the cup. Wow. And there was this long ball played down the line and their sweeper, I think the boy boy's name was Young. I think he was an ex Man United or something player. And he had a great match. And the ball was going out and he tried to guide it out. Instead of just kicking it out, he tried to kind of slow it down so he didn't give a corner away. Mm. And I just kept chasing, chasing, chasing. And I slid in from behind, hooked the ball back to young Ned Batavonis, and he scored the equaliser with eight seconds to go. Fantastic. And they just all hit the deck. Oh, they were all, that was him gone. Yes. And it went to extra time, of course, and young Ned scored another goal when we beat them 3 2. Oh, brilliant. Uh, chasing those balls down that they shouldn't, they shouldn't be in play. Well done, Tommy. Um, the, uh, obviously, they're the moments that you can suck an energy ah. out of a game and you can feel it on the park um, when, when you've got the better of a team. You, did you feel it when you got that equaliser? Did you feel like at that moment you guys were going to go on to do, do the job? Yeah, that, that, that was one of my attitude, uh, attributes. I, I never stopped chasing. I never stopped believing. Mm. And I hated getting beat. Mm. I can accept getting beat, but I hated it. Yes. So uh, I remember playing against, when it was in, against the Cosmos, when we go back to that game. Mm. I remember going up the line and their fullback, I think his name was Chin, uh, Eskadarian, the Iranian international. Mm. Oh, and he's just, he's took me out, took everything out and got the ball and went away. Mm. Anyway, I just dusted myself up and chased him about a hundred and odd yards down the line and done the exact same thing. Yes. So that was me. I was never beat, never beat. Mm. Mm. 
We're talking about a time uh, in the early days. You got, you got, you didn't wear. I know you wore shin pads towards the end of your career, and it's probably a smart move. But at the start of your career, you wore just the socks, mate. Yeah, just socks. I've never had it. Like, I, I always believed if a defender or, or player was kicking you, you had them beat from the start. Mm. I got a couple of sore ones, but never a nasty injury, as in stud wise and all that. Yeah, okay. so I was a bit lucky that way. Yep. Yep. And um, what are some of the, who did you uh, who did you spend more most time with? Obviously, in your time at Melbourne, Croatia, who did you gravitate to off the pitch? Uh, Alan Kerr was my best mate. Uh, he looked after me on the park and still friends to this day. I actually got my job at the airport not long ago. Uh, but we we all mingled because. Johnny Gardner, who was a coach, mm. he had a, well, I suppose that was his way of man managing us all. We used to go maybe training on a Monday night, like a, a cool down after the match. And we end up at the pub having a couple of beers, talking about the game before and what the game's coming up. So we had a good social relationship. After we won on a Sunday, if we never went back to the creation club, we all went out for a meal. Fantastic. And obviously, this is how you create a DNA of a team. A DNA of a club is the, the brotherhood that the boys put together off the park, right? It's not just the 90 minutes. And it's still going now, Sash. We still meet up once, or hopefully once a year, every two years. We have a, a, a cross night out and we, we meet all the players. I've still, God bless them so, some aren't here. But yeah, Croatians, British, Scottish, Wales... Anything it goes. Oh, brilliant. Uh, many, many good uh, memories. And obviously, as we previously said, um, you were truly honoured in that um, team of the century, uh, along with a number of other great teammates that you played with also made that side. Um, uh, Billy Wojtek and uh, Peter Blasme from memory. Is there any other boys that made it from your era into that team of the century? Uh, from I think Blasby was the only one from that era. Okay. All right. But, so, uh, as you see, and, Wojtek. no, Wojtek also made the team of the century side, so you played with him? Billy was on his way out as I was on my way in. Okay, got it. But still had very, a very talented player. Yes, yes. Fantastic, fantastic. And um, obviously, the uh, who would you say were the toughest uh, opponents in terms of you coming up to a clash? Where did you know you were going to have issues before the kickoff? Not so much an opponent, just some of the teams were good. Like mm. your Green Gully started to become a stronghold. Yep. Frankston City at the time were pretty good. Preston Macedonia. Mm-hmm. We were just that good. We didn't really worry about anybody. Uh-huh. It, got to a, it got to a stage, Sash, where we used to get a bonus for winning. The club had to stop it. And the only way we could get any more money off the club was to actually double or nothing. So if we lost, we don't get our wages. But if we won, we get double. So oh. that's the only way we could get a bonus. Oh, that's brilliant. So you boys got together and did a double or nothing with the committee. Lots of times. How good is that? How good is that? Well, I, mean, I think we had a ninety percent win rate, so it's not too bad. Yes, yes, so that's a that's a that's a great way to 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 show the belief of the boys um, going in. If you if you lose, not nah, hold the wages. We'll do double or nothing next week. Um, fantastic. And so um, there was uh, you you're in your in amongst. Um, your, your time at Melbourne, Croatia. And fr- is this true that you're the only state league player to get called up or one of the very few state league players to get called up into the Socceroo squad? Is that is that right? I, I think so. Uh, there's not too many who's done it as I know, especially when uh, the old NSL had started. Yep, yep. Because I stayed at Croatia because I loved it. You yep. know what I mean? Like... I think the NSL, I could have, I've missed probably five seasons of the NSL, if that's what you want to call it, because yep. of my love for the club. Yep. Uh, and the team of the century just capped it off. You know what I mean? Like, I think they nominated three players for 
out of every position. You know, I had guys like Danny Teato, who was a pro yeah. at Man City. Yeah. So he was on the right side with me, but anyway, I got in the team before him. So I've, I've got a lot to be thankful for at that club. Uh, yeah. Best best moments of my life. Yes. And I know you're uh, very fondly remembered um, by the Melbourne Croatian f faithful. So um, it's it's good when you give good service and, and the people remember um, your time there. So brilliant memories. So talk to me about um, getting selected in the, the first time you're getting selected in the Socceroo squad. How did that come about? Well, I, when, at that time, I, we trained three nights a week with Croatia and once a week with Victoria. That's how Victoria were a very good side at that time because usually it was just, oh, Victoria's got a game, we'll pick a squad. But we actually had a squad and we trained all the year through under okay. McKendry. Wow. So we were training four nights a week, technically. So the rumours were going about that uh, Gutenberg, uh, Rudy Gutendorf was actually looking at me for the, the soccer positions and I asked Len McHenry, I says, what's these rumours? Because I, I, I was going to go home because I had a, a bit of a falling out with the missus and kind of separated and I was going to shoot back home. And he says, no, the, the rumours are true. And, and like a few months later it was, he picked me in the squad. Yes. And what's that like uh, hearing the, obviously now you're naturalised, what's that like representing your country? Oh, great honour. It was a great honour. Oh, uh, the only disappointment I got was it ended too quick for me because mm. I got the injury that nobody could tell me what was wrong with me. Mm. But actually, when I got in there, I played, I think I played 14 games straight. So it was going to take a good player to get me out. And um, the only good thing out of it was my, one of my mates, Kenny Murphy, took my position and he went on to have a stellar career with, with Australia. Yes. So that was the only good thing about that. But I, I would have probably had a great, a better career than I had if I stayed there without yes. injury. And uh, so uh, tell us uh, some of the teams that you played against uh, when you were um, playing for the Socceroos. What, who were some of the, the sides that you, you remember most memory? Oh, we, went, we went on a 7-2 match of China, I think, when we were there. Mm -hmm. And we had a three-match tour in Australia against Czechoslovakia. Yes. And they had his chasing shadows one time. They were a fantastic team. Mm. And um, you needed a couple of goals. Can you tell, tell me about, do you remember any of the, the, the ones that you uh, got that stick into your mind today? Uh, not, not, not really for Australia. I think I just did a couple of tap-ins or whatever. Okay. <laughs> Nothing yeah. fantastic. All right. But uh, yeah, I remember every game. It was great. And, uh, yeah, so great, great honour to reach the pinnacle representing your, your country. So, um, and obviously, too, playing for Victoria, that was a great honour. I didn't know you boys trained every week. So you would have, you would have formed a really good bond with other boys uh, from different teams. Yeah, we had, we, had, we had a good squad. We trained every week. We had a system that we were going to play. Mm. Because, as you know, we were sort of part-time players. Yep. And these touring teams were pros. So we played, we played a possession game back there, Sash, which was never thought of here. And the reason we did that was we, only, we got 11 men behind the ball and said, well, see what they want to do. Let them come and get it. And we used to just knock it about at the back, back to the goalkeeper. And then we would take teams on the break. And we were good at it. We had a lot of good results. And uh, who, were the coach, who was the coach uh, for Victoria at that time? Because I know Len Gardner McKendry. took Ken, Len McKendry. Because I know Gardner ended up uh, a little bit later. But when you were playing for Victoria, it was uh, Lenny McKendry. Yeah, Len McKendry. I think my first game, I think, was against Middlesbrough. I yep. don't know if I was on the bench. And that was under Ronnie Smith. Oh, yes. So. And, then, uh, and then I think Mr. White had a couple of games in charge. But McKendry was the mainstay of my time there. Okay. And we used to train on Olympic Park. It was tremendous. Uh, that, that, that would have been like carpet training on uh, Olympic Park and no bigger stage. Um, so fantastic. Who, who is 
obviously your, your time at uh, Melbourne, Croatia, you mentioned all the boys that played with you there. But who was one of, one of the players that you admired in that Victorian side that wasn't part of your squad that you thought, OK, I wish he was part of the Melbourne, Croatia team? Oh, one of the players who played for Victoria, well, probably Carrie Cole, <laughs> Jamie Payton, just some goal scorers. Aizen yeah. Don was a great sweeper. Yeah. Uh, very good side. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, so, uh, yeah, and uh, did you, uh, was it interesting coming against those players, obviously, when you're on the opposition side? Uh, now you're training once a week, but then you also get the opportunity to play them. Um, what's that like? Oh, there was a there's a bit of banter there. I, we, I used to get a lot of banter put on me because we still played in the the state league at the time. Well, Gary Cole and all them were playing NSL. Yeah. So we were all, we were in we were in the little league compared to them. Yeah. <laughs> but I used to say to them, "Yeah, but I'm getting more money than what you're getting." <laughs> <laughs> that that's uh, that's brilliant, and so. Um, a number of years at Melbourne, Croatia. I think he, I think uh, you were saying uh, about six years at, at Croatia. Um, is that the, the type of place that you could have stayed there forever? Yeah, I, I should have been a one-man club. I fell out with the president of the club, who was a great mate of mine, Joe Seager. Mm -hmm. But as you can tell, I'm opinionated as well as him. But I know more about soccer as well as Joe. Mm -hmm. So Joe... We got pulled in me, Keith Adams, I think yes. Peter Blasby, Sean Patton. We all got pulled into the training, into the office one night after training, one at a time, and got told we weren't going to be playing again for the team because we weren't playing for the coach. Now, the coach was about 65 year old. Uh, I think his name was Kapitanovic, Don, Don Kapitanovic, I'm not sure. And, um, so when they pulled me in and they says, oh, you're not playing for the coach, I says, well, I don't care who coaches Croatia. I play for me. And I go on the part and give 100%. I don't care who's coaching. Mm. And they says, well, you're going to be in the reserves from now on? And I says, okay, well, give me a transfer, which I shouldn't have done. I should have probably just sat there because I've probably got in the first team the following week again. Yes, okay. But you were so, principled at the time and you felt like you needed to stand up for yourself. But yeah, okay. Um, Whereas it was the same as when I, I did a couple of because I took pre season one year for them when I never had a coach. Okay. And I think one ample cup game, as I say, we came in. I think Heidelberg would beat us one nothing at half time. And the president came in and started blasting me in front of players. So I just took my shirt off and flung it at them. Mm. You said, You pick the team. And then they went out and got beat 5 nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, the. Um... You, you would uh, go on. Was it 1984 that you also then went on to coach uh, Melbourne, Croatia? Is that, is that, does, is that timing sound right? Uh, possible. Possible. I was player coach. I never, like, I never actually... Yeah, I did, I did a few player... I did player coach at Croatia, player coach at uh, Green Gully for a little while when Gus McLeod got given the bump. And uh, I was very successful as a player coach, but... It's what I says to the players, because when, when I took over at Green Gully as a player coach, Gus asked me not to take it. And I asked him why. He says, well, I think the committee will ask you. And I says, okay, I won't take it. But then the more I thought about it, I says, well, if I don't take it, we're going to get a stranger coming in. And you've done all the coaching, so it doesn't make any sense. Yes. So that's why I, I took it. And that was, at, that was at Croatia as well when Gardner got the flick as well. Mm. Like I never coached. I just kept the team ticking. All the coaching had been done during the year. Yes. And you obviously had the chemistry and knew the patterns of play and the style that you wanted to play. And you knew everybody had their position. So everybody knew what it is that you were going to do. And as a player coach, Sash, you're there. So you can fix it right away. Whereas as a normal coach, you're off the bench. You, it's a wee bit harder. Fantastic. And... Um, so you, uh, you have this TIFF at Melbourne, Croatia, and uh, you're off uh, down the road uh, to Green Gully, also another great club in the western suburbs of uh, Melbourne. 
Um, so that was a you, you mentioned Gus McLeod had the had the reins over there. Who are some of the other boys that played with you at Green Gully? Uh, Lou Dennis was in goals. Johnny Grimald. We had um, Stuart Cannell, David Hogburn, Vazalo. Well, I had a very talented squad, but so it wasn't the was, same uh, as playing with. Willie Vasallo, obviously, who played for, for was it Willie Vasallo who played uh, the, the Maltese International, who played at uh, Green Gully? That's correct. That's correct. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah, so uh, Green Gully, uh, very good Maltese community there. Uh, my first junior club, uh, so um, in uh, Kill or Downs area. So, um, fantastic. And um, what were your memories there of uh, Green Gully? Well, as I said, I was only I was there when the when the national league split into two. Mm -hmm. I think they had the northern and the southern. Yep. So I, I never enjoyed it as much. It wasn't the same as being at Croatia. Okay. So now you. But we had we had success. We won the Dalkerty Cup, and I think we won the top four. So we we, we won cups with them. And um, your you you mentioned that you're you're, you're having. Uh, Injury. How did how do you feel that those injuries uh, sort of impeded your your play? Was it at uh, in your time in Croatia or, or a gully? What, what's happening? Well, it was at Croatia and it put, it put me out of the game for two years mm. because nobody. It happened when I actually trained with Australia. Okay, it was a Wednesday night, and we we did training at St George. I think we trained that and went back to the hotel. And then in the morning, I tried to get out of my bed and oh, the pains I was getting in my lower stomach, I, I couldn't, I had to roll out of bed. Okay. But the, the biggest problem was nobody knew what was wrong with me. Okay. And I, what I think I had, Sash, is I think I had osteopubis, which is a big thing that goes about now. But back then, nobody knew what it was. Okay. So eventually, what I spent most of my time in the swimming pool, trying to do all the running, the exercises and after a few weeks, I would come good, and then I would hit the track again, and then I would break down. So I had two op two operations to try and fix it, never fixed it. I had 12 months off, not doing anything, never fixed it. Then John Eisendorn told me about, I think a surgeon called Kevin Myers. He says, go and see him. So I went and seen this Kevin Myers, and they lay me on his, on his couch, and they put, his, they put two fingers at my pubes and told me to sit up. And I nearly went through the roof with a pain. And he says, I think I know what's wrong with you. So what he ended up doing was in the pelvis, you've got the two holes and all the like the nerves and the muscles go through all that. He actually opened me up both sides and scraped it all, made it bigger. And says, you should be okay now. And I went back to pre-season with Johnny Gardner at Croatia. And I started running during the pre-season. And I says to Johnny Garner, I says, I think I'm going to break down again. And Johnny Garner just looked at me and says, and? And that was it. He just kept me running. And yes. I eventually got back again. I, just, I went through the pain barrier again and got back. But it, it deflated me because, as I says, I could have played 100 games for Australia. Who knows? Yeah. This is the thing. Uh, osteoidus pubis is an overuse. Uh, now we know a lot more of the science behind it and how you should treat it. Um, it's, it's obviously an overuse uh, injury uh, and, it, and it's treated a lot better now. There's a, the science behind it. But going back, you know, 30 plus years ago, you know, we don't really... Well, the, the Aussie doctor, Dr. Corrigan, he, he said I had pelvis instability. Mm. That's what he thought I had. Yep. And the way you can tell you've got that is you stand on one leg and get an x-ray taken, and then you're at, you're actually pelvis goes up or down. But every time I got the x-rays done, it wouldn't show that, but all the symptoms were showing that. Yeah. But, so that's what he thought I had, but that's history. Yes, and... Um, it never, it never stopped me developing. Yes, and um, you uh, obviously did, uh, you, you had a fantastic uh, career nonetheless. Um, if only if we had the science back then, we, you know, you would, have, uh, you would have been nursed through that time in a different way, maybe not so much those early operations um, to get you right. Um, so, and, but 
okay, you're, you're now uh, 35 and you go across over at Geelong to Bell Park. Uh, you, you go on to play another five or so years there till you're 40. What is going on? Tommy Cumming, well done. Well, I just enjoyed it. And I was still scoring goals and making friendships. Yes. When I went to Bell Park, I, I, when I went there, my friend took me down there, George Waters. He was actually coaching. And um, I went into the committee again, and the committee is sitting there, and they says, oh, we'd like to sign you. I says, well, Green Gully want a transfer of $5,000. You need to buy me first. And I says, and then I want X amount of dollars for playing. And they agreed on everything. And then I says, do you want a two-year contract? And the, <laughs> all the committee looked at me and says, what? I says, well... If you sign me for one year on the money that you're giving me and you want me next year, it's going to cost you double. So they actually gave me a two-year contract to play. Oh, smart, yes. And uh, two-year contract ends up being five years. I'm sure you would have scored plenty of goals. Um, you're talking about, I know it's down the leagues, but uh, you, you're, you've ended up finishing up as a, as a 40 year old, um, fantastic. They got, the, they got the money's worth and they got the money's worth and they got the promotion. Yes. Yes. And, uh, the, which of the, which of the titles now you, you, you've gone across, um, one titles all, all throughout. So nothing better than being part of a team and winning some silverware or, or titles, but would it be your, your, your titles that you won uh, at Melbourne, Croatia that you remember most fondly? Yes, and also the, the, best, the best award that any player can get is from the peers. Mm. And I won a few of them, and that, they made the most to me. And, like, I think I'm still the most decorated player in Australian soccer. I, I won the double-double in, in, in Victoria. I don't yes. think anybody's ever done that. And on my comeback year, it was after two years out of the game, I was running up, beaten by two votes from the Polonia boy, uh, Stephen Mila, who was a brilliant player. But he beat me with two votes on my comeback year. Otherwise, I would have had three uh, Rothmans medals. And, and really, the, 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 the Rothmans medal, like you said, uh, being nominated by your peers is... Uh... You really need to do something special for somebody else to say, okay, yes, this is the guy that deserves my vote. Uh, so congratulations on those achievements. Now, in your time at, uh, at, at Melbourne, Croatia, um, some extremely talented individuals passed through that. One that comes to mind is a, a young uh, Croatian boy from Geelong, um, Eddie Krinčević. Uh, tell me about... Your, your time with Eddie on the park. Well, Eddie was a young kid coming through the coming through the ranks. Uh, six foot nine, <laughs> could run like a, a gazelle. Brilliant in the air, and could you score goals for fun? Mm. Um, I became very close with Eddie. We were very good friends together. But he never stayed long because he was on a path to professionalism. I think. And I think he was one of the first. Aussie players to go overseas. Yes, there wouldn't be many. I think he went to Belgium, if I'm not mistaken. No, he went. He first went. He first went to Croatia, and then after Croatia, he went to to, to Belgium. Yes, but he, he first played in uh, the Croatian first, the Yugoslav first division. Um, but and yeah, and it wasn't too long before um, Tony Labazetta signed him at Marconi. Um, so. Uh, Stealing him away from Melbourne, Croatia, but I'm, I'm sure. I nearly, uh, I nearly, I nearly joined him at Marconi. Okay. Because when I when I when I played for um, Australia against New York Cosmos up at the, I think it was the Sydney Cricket Ground, 1971 yeah. or 72, and what a game! That was probably the most game I remember playing for Australia because it was an all-ticket game, and the crowd bro broke the gates in. Okay, when so we were actually, was, that, was that 81, 82, you, you mean? Like 88? Yeah, it was the yeah. first game, the first time that they came to Australia. Yep. And we beat them up there. Okay. So we beat them 2-1, I think. Yep. And as I say, 
there was that they broke the, the crowd broke the grates in so there was too many people in the ground and they were all round the park so the ball could hardly go out for a throw in because they were kicking it back in oh wow I think there was about 60,000 plus there that would have been a sight um, what did it feel like everybody Actually, on it's on YouTube Sash if you want to look at it put Soccer is Cosmos uh, 81 or 82 the early whatever it was yeah. And uh, the actual last kick of the game was mine. It was a corner kick that played to me and the full-time whistle goes, and I've got the ball. Oh, now, instead of just, instead of keeping it, I just kicked it into the crowd. <laughs> because I, <laughs> it wasn't long after that I got my injury because I thought it would never end, you know. Yes. So that was a highlight. Oh, brilliant and fantastic. So uh, what, what memories... Um, if if you if you look back, do you think okay? You know, football. It, it feels like the game was played yesterday, but uh, you said you remember all the games. What was one of the ones that uh, that you think? Yes, this is this is it. Was it that game with against New York Cosmos? Or? Yeah, that was that was a standout for me because it was just at the start of the game they put the lights out mm. and the. It was one Australian player and one Cosmos player came down the tunnel and they put spotlights on them and we ran out onto the park. So, yeah, it was a fanfare. So after that game, as I was sent to you, after the game, we were in the clubhouse and uh, Les Schaeffler actually approached me and he wanted me to go to Maconi. So he's taken me into the corner and started talking figures and money. <laughs> and uh, we were going to China the following day, I think. We were travelling to China. Anyway, I signed a contract that night with Les Schaefer to go to Marconi for that season. Wow. And so... Uh, but and then... We, it never happened. We so went happened? on tour. Yeah. But it never happened. We went on tour the next morning and um, I was rooming with the guys and Eddie Krenchevik, Tony Henderson, Marconi players. Yes. They said, oh, well done, me man. You're coming, if you're coming to Marconi to play with us. I went, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Me and one wing, Peter Shan on the other. We should do okay. And um, Eddie says, you know you pay tax on your wages. And I went, pardon? He says, you pay tax on your, your wages. So that was it. Came off the plane after the turn, just walked straight by him. Never went anywhere. Because I was on good money at Croatia. Okay. There you go. Interesting sliding doors moments. Um, yeah. That would have been that would have been nice seeing Peter Shan on one wing, Eddie Krinchevich on the, at the top, and you on the other. That would have been nice to see as well. But obviously, smart decisions. Uh, back pocket, you got to look after the the um, you got to pay the mortgage and look after the family. I understand. So um, had a lot of slide, had, a, had a lot of sliding moments because, like I said, Eddie Thompson wanted me at Sydney City to yes. play with Joe Watson. Yes. Johnny Warren wanted me at Canberra to play the Canberra, Canberra City at the time. I don't know yes. what they were called, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there was, there was a few. And so the one I regret is South Melbourne Hellas, who were the glamour team. Yes. Well, I'd love to have played for them, maybe. That was the only team I would look at after Croatia. Yes. And, um, yes, they also had uh, a lot of fanatical support, uh, as well as Melbourne, Croatia. Um, but, look, you... Um, I think uh, you end up playing for the Socceroos, being named in the uh, Melbourne Croatia Team of the Century. That's a big honour um, in itself. So you also, uh, like you said, did a small uh, number uh, after your playing career. You uh, went on to did some work with the VSF. What were you doing with them with the Federation coaching? I was actually, during the years, I was actually um, injured. Uh, Timmy White asked me if I would like to do some coaching for the schools and things like that. And uh, I was very interested. So I used to go pack my balls and my cones and take the car and, and go to all these schools and put some sessions on for the kids. How good's that? Um, and um, look, uh, if uh, anybody's watching out there, you've got a um, ex soccer um He's, ta he's held uh, uh, sessions in uh, Melbourne Croatia's Team of the Century. Players um, hit up uh, Tommy Cumming, 
if you coach your, uh, your, your team, I think you, you should, you'd be invaluable uh, today um, helping, um, you know, any in, in young sides, junior sides, or TD or these types of systems um, in these community clubs where you don't necessarily need your, your, your tickets. Um, so tell us, Tommy, what advice do you have to the kids that uh, would be uh, listening to this, that want to reach the, 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 the best that they can possibly be um, the thing I would say to other kids is listen to what people say to you and try and take all the goodness out of it obviously some people are going to tell you things that you don't want to hear but take it and use it against everything else and it's not always the best player who goes on and makes a career out of the game you've got to have attributes to be a, a soccer player you don't need to have them all you got, you got your skill, skillful players, you got your fast players, you got your tough players, you got your brainy players who can read a game. So the biggest asset for any young boy or girl is attitude. Mm. If you've got the right attitude, it will take you a long, long, long way. And never let anybody tell you you can't do something. Always believe in your own talent. So that's what I would say to any young kid. Because, like, I used to get it all the time. I'm too little. I'm too small. Mm. So if I was five inches taller, I'd have probably been a professional back in Scotland. Mm. But I came here because I was five, five inches shorter, and I became a professional here. I had the best, best life anybody could ever ask. I had a great career. I made lots of friends. That's all you can ask for in soccer. Fantastic, wise words by the great Tommy Cumming, uh, a soccerer, Melbourne, Croatia, team of the century uh, winner, uh, multiple individual awards um, and plenty of silverware in the closet um, in uh, the, the clubhouses of the teams that you played for. Congratulations and thank you very much for your service to Australian football. Um, we really, really appreciate your time today. As I says to you, Sash, I think I got more hey guys, out of it than Australia. We've come to the end of this episode. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, fantastic. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to our wonderful guest. If you like this type of content and would like to see more, how about you hit the like and subscribe button and have a fantastic day.